I don't watch anime, but I've seen Cowboy Bebop. How many times have you heard that one? Spike Spiegel sounds like the stage name of an overly goth clarinet player, but luckily the clarinet is pretty damn essential to jazz, and jazz is integral to Cowboy Bebop. Bebop is known as a gateway anime. When a baby otaku wannabe is looking for some recommendations to get into the scene, no one is telling them to start with FLCL, you know? It's all about losing yourself in the world of Cowboy Bebop, diving deep into an abundance of genres all mixed together to mold something entirely unique for its time. Noir storytelling, 40s jazz, country westerns, romantic action, mystery, tragedy, sci-fi, Cowboy Bebop has something for everyone. And everyone has a bone for telling people who haven't watched it that they need to. I'd argue it is the classic anime choice for the majority of anime enthusiasts, with many a dedicated weeb ensuring they watch it at least once a year. But 1998, that was a long time ago, coming up on 25 years, and I can't name another anime with the same kind of staying power, cultural relevance, and consistency of Cowboy Bebop. Alright, maybe Evangelion, but that show has its own part to play in this story, promise. But if there's one anime that has a level of appreciation that trumps any other, it's definitely Cowboy Bebop. When something permeates the collective consciousness of a cultural zeitgeist so completely that even people outside that populace are fans of it, then something beyond the obvious, it's really good, is happening behind the scenes. There's a reason for that popularity that goes beyond good writing and animation, and Bebop is not just viewed as one of the greatest because it was great during its time. There's tons of classic anime, Trigun, Outlaw Star, Lupin the Third, Mobile Suit Gundam, Yudisei Yatsura, I mean pick your poison, but none of them hold a candle to Cowboy Bebop's reign as the must-watch classic, let alone the must-watch anime. Even Azusa Matsuda, the vice president of the Society for the Promotion of Japanese Animation, has said, If you haven't watched Cowboy Bebop, then you're not a true anime fan. It's like a badge you have to earn. And I know a lot of Wii Boomers who would echo that statement. No matter how you cut it, Cowboy Bebop is a defining show for the entire medium. I'd consider it the most influential show to modern anime, save maybe Neon Genesis Evangelion. But why was it so influential? What did Cowboy Bebop do that no one else has ever been able to replicate? Sci-fi had been done, westerns were already a thing, it's not like it did anything particularly new. Everything in Cowboy Bebop is influenced by something else, so how has it kept popularity for two and a half decades with no sign of slipping? That's what we're going to delve into today, because Cowboy Bebop isn't my favorite anime, it's not even close, but I respect and admire the influence it's had on anime culture. This is the story of Cowboy Bebop, the history, choices, and sheer luck that created arguably the most critically acclaimed anime of all time. The year is 1998. Google is founded in a garage. Now disgraced Dr. Andrew Wakefield publishes his research that autism is linked to vaccines and sets in motion the anti-vax community that we deal with today. Bill Clinton decides BJ's aren't and still gets impeached and Cowboy Bebop airs for the first time in TV Tokyo. 1998 was a crazy year, people, and while TV Tokyo did debut Cowboy Bebop, they chopped it off at the knees. The network was dealing with the fallout of a few notable media violence incidents, which had broadcasting standards far tighter than normal. With the amount of blood and violence in the show, Cowboy Bebop was left in an uneasy position as to whether or not it would be aired at all. Ultimately, TV Tokyo only aired 12 episodes of Cowboy Bebop, leaving viewers with less than half of the show full runtime. It's lucky it was aired at all, and I'd wager it's only thanks to the nature of Bebop's episodes having self-contained stories that it got any airtime anyway. Luckily, the Wow Wow Network stepped up four months later and released the full 26 episodes uncut, allowing Japanese audiences to see the full splendor of Cowboy Bebop. Contrary to a lot of what you'll find online, Bebop did quite well both commercially and critically in Japan before it was ever released in the 
the United States, Cowboy Bebop was winning multiple awards. I mean, look at these awards, there's like 15 flumptillion. But Bebop's success was full of doubt at the outset of its creation. Originally, the project was funded by Bandai's toy division with the goal of selling toy spacecrafts. Cowboy Bebop was truly a trailblazer of sci-fi when it came to anime because there's no hint of mechs in the show. Back in the 90s, you didn't make sci-fi anime without giant robot mechs because you'd never recoup on your investment. See, even today, anime itself makes very little money relative to the investment needed to make it. The three main revenue streams for anime come from international licensing, aka selling the rights to air or stream anime on other platforms outside of Japan, anime-themed pachinko machines, believe it or not, and the biggest by far, anime merchandise. Merchandise is vital to the success of an anime, and here Shinichiro Watanabe was making a sci-fi show without any giant robots in sight. Jonathan Clemens, author of Anime A History, has said, The No Giant Robots directive was regarded by some at the time as industrial suicide, since that drastically reduced the likely merchandise tie-ins. And once Bandai got a look at some of the early footage of Bebop, they completely pulled out of the project because they didn't see it selling any toy merchandise, which would be a huge loss for the company. Bebop was left in development limbo until Bandai Visual, a sister company to the toy division, stepped in to sponsor the project. Unlike Bandai's toy division, Bandai Visual didn't care about merchandise at all. They focused on the distribution enterprise of anime and film, primarily focusing on North America. But even Bandai Bandai Visuals wasn't an easy sponsor to get. Watanabe and producer Masahiko Minami had to promise that they would recoup their investment in music spin-offs, which is why Bebop had Yoko Kano creating the score. With Bandai Visual on board, Bebop's market shifted to heavily focus on North America, aka the United States. And remember, we're talking the 90s here. This was a time when watching anime was nearly impossible unless it was aired on the Toonami block or late night on sci-fi, and Toonami had only started a year before Bebop. Other than that, the only Western audience for anime was hardcore otakus that would essentially throw a 20 down to pick up a VHS of something they'd never heard of and hoped it was good. To make it in America, Bebop needed a dub, so enter Mary Elizabeth McGlynn, the ADR or Automated Dialogue Replacement Director and English voice for Julia. It was her job to not botch the dub, which was about as good as you could hope for back then, but in her own words, there was very little pressure. I was like, wow, nobody's ever going to see this. So you know what? Let's just make it for us. Let's take it in a different direction from standard anime voice acting, which is very heightened and big. Let's make it much more cinematic and really dive into these characters. To this day, the direction of McGlynn can be pointed to for why the English dub is still considered one of the best ever produced. Most shows have a minimum line count voice actors need to get through because of the budget, but the actors for Cowboy Bebop had literally no restrictions. McGlynn didn't care how much they got done in a day, it was all about relaxing, having fun with the characters, and most importantly, creating something that they loved. It turned job into a passion project and a luxury gig at the same time, and the results speak for themselves. It cannot be overstated just how influential the dub was in making Cowboy Bebop a success in the West. To this day, it is praised as one of the best dubs of all time because the voice actors had the time and passion to develop something truly unique in the anime space. To me, Bebop's dub flows with a sense of realism, truth, and maturity, which is very hard to find within this medium. It becomes clear that the audience isn't just little kids, that this is a show for adults, for everybody. It has themes that hit people with life experience, and the performances given represent that to a T. But that adult performance presented its own problems. Like I said earlier, there was nowhere for an adult anime to be aired in the US. Toonami was a kid's block, first and foremost. It had Dragon Ball and Sailor Moon. It was meant for a younger audience. Despite Jason DeMarco, the co-creator of Toonami, being absolutely obsessed with Cowboy Bebop just from the intro before he ever even saw any of the show itself, he already knew it would never fit in the Toonami block. And I get that. I was a Toonami viewer in 1998. I was seven years old. In 2001, when Bebop finally did come to America, I was 10. 
Cowboy Bebop was not meant for me to watch back then. Uh, I did, but I was more interested in Dragon Ball and Sailor Moon was making me feel things for the first time. I wasn't ready to deal with themes like loneliness or being numb to the world around me. I didn't know what it meant to not feel like I belonged somewhere. Seriously putting Cowboy Bebop on Toonami would likely have killed the show. They'd have had to gut its contents, take out the more adult episodes and graphic violence. It would have been no better than TV Tokyo, airing only the 12 episodes that they did, and that's not what DeMarco wanted. Because the more he saw of the show, the more he loved it. So instead of cutting it to shreds to get it out as soon as Cartoon Network got their hands on it, DeMarco held on to it because he was in the process of developing a new block of content, something called Adult Swim. Now we all know Adult Swim, it's a program block specifically dedicated to animated shows for adults. I mean, it's right in the name. Cowboy Bebop was the first ever anime to air during Adult Swim, meaning this was the first time a seinen anime ever had the chance to be broadcast to its correct audience. Before Adult Swim, as McGlynn said, nobody's ever going to see this. This was truly the first chance for a seinen anime to be put in front of the right audience to receive it in America. So naturally, it did absolute gangbusters, right? Well, not exactly. In fact, Cowboy Bebop never was a hit in terms of raw viewership numbers. However, it also wasn't a total flop. And most importantly, DeMarco loved it. So after it aired in 2001, he put it on again in 2002, and again in 2003, and again and again. We kept airing Cowboy Bebop for 12 or 13 years straight, maybe more. We literally never had it off the air. It was never a hit. It just seemed to do as well as any other anime. We just aired the shit out of it because we loved it, and we didn't particularly care if it got great ratings. You want to know why everyone who is anyone in America knows about Cowboy Bebop? This is why. Cartoon Network aired the show year after year without stopping. It's been run at least once every year since 2007, with HD remasters beginning in 2015. There's not a single other show that was aired that consistently for such a long period of time that allowed for a massive fan base to accumulate behind it. Cartoon Network didn't actually know how large of an audience it had gained since the show never really produced exceptionally high numbers compared to any of the other anime. The first time they actually realized Cowboy Bebop had a large following was through complaints on the Adult Swim message boards. Messages like, Gone! You guys have shown this for like a decade. Everyone has seen Bebop. We all know Bebop is great. Why are you still showing it so much? Without meaning to, and through a sheer love of the show, regardless of how well it did, the decision makers at Cartoon Network gave Cowboy Bebop so much exposure that it had become a classic in the West simply because you couldn't get away from it. So many people have experienced it over the years. Multiple generations growing up and watching Adult Swim have had the chance to see Cowboy Bebop on TV. And even now, that trend has continued with streaming. Cowboy Bebop is available on Crunchyroll, Funimation, Tubi, Netflix, Hulu, Slink TV, and YouTube TV. Its consistent airtime has naturally made it one of the first anime people saw as they became young adults. It's no wonder it's seen as a gateway anime. So many people saw it on Adult Swim growing up as their first anime. Or for the first time they were watching something that wasn't shonen. I don't mean this to take away from the excellence of Cowboy Bebop's writing and animation because it's absolutely there, but when you look at the full picture, it's an insane amount of luck and coincidence that got Cowboy Bebop to where it is. It's like the rails to success were being put one in front of the other for Cowboy Bebop, and we haven't even come to the most important piece that got the show made in the first place. Neon Genesis Evangelion. Some of you might be asking, where are you going with this? Some of you might be right on track. But Evangelion came out in 1995. It was just a few years before Cowboy Bebop. It was massively controversial and completely broke any mold for what was expected of an anime. Evangelion's success had a huge impact on TV anime as a whole. Ano was given massive control over the project as its creator, something incredibly uncommon in the 1980s as anime was in a sharp decline due to Japan's economic crash. Companies were taking less risks on shows and refocusing TV anime on children's shows, while adults were mainly given limited run VHS series that targeted hardcore otaku. Evangelion is often credited for the revitalization of the anime industry as a whole, 
because it proved that the space wasn't just for hardcore fans or kids. In two years, Ava sold $400 million worth of merchandise, making it a massive financial success and at the same time proving that creators with more control and freedom to pursue their personal vision can create wildly successful results. That's inarguably the most important and consistent aspect of media that becomes truly impactful artistic freedom and editorial independence. It's what we strive to create here on our own channel, going against the flow and creating what we want to see rather than what is expected of us. And it's only thanks to our Patreon that we're able to continue doing so, and only because of creator funding like Patreon that truly independent creators will continue to exist and push boundaries. In this world, you need to be a part of what you want to see, or it will be absorbed by the homogenous mess of a JRPG final boss that is modern media. Be the difference, check out a Patreon, and it would mean the world if you supported ours. But spinning it back, after Evangelion finished, there was this vacuum in anime to fill. There was now a very clear space for adult anime that could be incredibly successful, but nothing for that particular audience. Cowboy Bebop fits that mold perfectly. In addition to making that space for adult anime, Ava also drastically broke the stereotypes for anime characters. Instead of having a hothead protagonist like Naruto, you got Shinji, who's best described as a wet blanket. It made space for female characters that broke the typical mold of anime heroines. You got vastly different and beloved woman characters in Asuka as a Sundere and Rei as a mix between Dandere and Kudere. These breaks from stereotypes made room for characters like Spike, who is jaded, cynical, and brooding, as well as Faye, who you expect to be a love interest, but she's simply not. Instead, she's deeply emotionally flawed and no one's arm candy despite her looks. Without Evangelion, there likely wouldn't have been a place for Bebop to thrive. Its success created the opportunity for something new to be explored down the line. I've put all this together to show just how insane this series of events, luck, and timing was for Cowboy Bebop to become such a beloved classic. It took Evangelion making the space for adult anime right before Bebop, a sponsor pulling out, the right sponsor coming in to fund the project that specifically focused on distribution in North America, the right voice director that gave the actors time and specifically went against the grain of normal anime voices, Cartoon Network deciding to hold off showing Cowboy Bebop until Adult Swim was created, creating Adult Swim in the first place so there was a place for Bebop to air uncut, and then deciding to run the show every year since its release in the US. That is an absolutely insane amount of luck and timing that gave Cowboy Bebop the opportunity to become as beloved as it is, and I truly believe that if even one of these things didn't happen, we wouldn't know Cowboy Bebop the way we do today. That being said, there's still one more aspect to the show that led to its success. And that, of course, is the show itself. Watanabe wanted to design a show that would appeal to sophisticated adults. During the making of Cowboy Bebop, Watanabe would often inspire the animation team by telling them what they were working on would be something memorable up to three decades later, and that turned out not to be hubris. We're 25 years past Cowboy Bebop's initial release, and here I am making a video about it. And I'm certainly not the first, and I certainly won't be the last. Watanabe was looking to make something different and used a massive amount of inspiration from American cinema to create the setting and atmosphere of Cowboy Bebop. The noir style of storytelling, the western influence, cowboys, these are things that resonate with an American audience. It was something familiar for them to latch onto, even the way the sci-fi was done was more Americanized. Again, giant robots were the norm in Japan, but in the West, we had Star Wars and Star Trek, Babylon 5 and Blade Runner. All our sci-fi was about dudes and spaceships. It made Bebop's overall premise easy for American audiences to relate to, but most importantly, the characters were deep flawed and they felt real. There's an obvious and palpable vulnerability in every character. Ed's feelings of abandonment by her father, Faye's struggle with never feeling like she belongs, Jet's betrayal from people he cares about, and of course Spike chasing after a lost love, betrayed by a friend, and running from his past. Cowboy Bebop has something for everyone who is going through or has gone through a difficult section in life. There's at least one character 
in at least one episode that feels like it's directed at you, and more importantly, telling your story. It's a mirror to yourself, but it hurts less because you get to look inside at an arm's length. The stars aligned for Cowboy Bebop to be a success. So many things went the way they needed to for that show to have the reach and fan base that it does, but all that luck only created the opportunity for it to succeed at the scale it has. The show's ability to draw people in and make them fall in love with the story is what kept Cartoon Network running it every year. For something to consistently do as well as it did, not sharp top, not do, you know, gangbusters, but for every year for the show to continually do as well as it did the year before is kind of insane if you think about it. The stage was set for a juggernaut of anime to come through and make a lasting impact. It could have been any show that tried to fill that void, but I don't think that means that any show would have succeeded. Cowboy Bebop filled that space because it's the show that fit in that moment of time perfectly, and it might always be that show. It hit every angle needed to become a monstrous success within that storm of circumstances. It feels almost serendipitous in retrospect, like Bebop was meant to be made for an audience to truly introduce the United States to anime in a way it never had before. I don't think it would be remiss to call Cowboy Bebop the most influential anime of our time, but what's truly incredible is the insane story of how it got to where it is today. <laughs>